Hello everyone, welcome back to The Accent Designer. I'm Osama Gazal, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about five things we must learn in order to become mobile first designers. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Before we start, we have to make it very clear that designing for websites or desktop is completely different than mobile. You have a larger real estate, meaning that you have much more space to communicate more messages, to specify certain sections for branding, marketing, or even if you want to communicate casual messages that don't necessarily relate to the product or service you're offering. In mobile, it's completely different medium. And with that comes point number one, identifying the medium. One of the common mistakes out there that you can find on things like Dribbble or Behance, that when we say the word mobile, people start automatically think about mobile devices or phone devices. But when we design for mobile, you have to understand the differences between phones, tablets, and smartwatches, because all these are mobile devices and they all have their own specifications and requirements when it comes to uh, the visual language, information hierarchy, and visual hierarchy. So before deciding whether we need to design for a phone, tablet, or a smartwatch, uh, spend more time and effort trying to understand uh, the underlying use case and target audience, then um, deciding which one of these mediums works best for the target audience will become much easier. For example, if you're designing for fitness, it's gonna become much harder when you think phone or tablet first, right? Think about it from the user's perspective. You're trying to use a device that is very convenient when you're on the run, you're practicing certain activity, you're sweating, you're probably spending a lot of uh, you know, energy doing something. So it makes no sense or it's less convenient and less convincing to design for phone first in such a use case, right? On the other hand, if you're designing for music, videos, streaming services, uh, it's pretty much the other way around. You need to design for a bigger medium in order for people to have much better interaction with the products and services being offered in these platforms. With that comes point number two, start from the bottom up, meaning think what is it the user is trying to achieve then go backward. It's very, very difficult to build something and um, encourage people to use if you haven't really considered how they use or what is it they're trying to accomplish in the first place, right? So if we're talking about um, exercising, working out, it's going to be very difficult to build a mobile app in a market that the majority of its users use in wearable devices. Or on the other hand, it's very hard to build a website for music streaming services in a market where 90 or 95% of the users are much more uh, familiar and comfortable using their phone devices, right? So you absolutely have to put yourself in the user's shoes try to understand how they interact with technology, then try to understand where is the gap that you can fulfill with your product, then build the product or design the product. Point number three, you have to be very, very succinct and specific with the product you're building. As I mentioned in the beginning, unlike websites, in mobile devices, you have a very limited amount of time and space to communicate something. So you have to be very specific and intentional with how you make a better use of this space. In other words, you have to be very, very straight to the point. And to do that, you have to maintain a very strong understanding of information hierarchy, visual hierarchy, best practices, and uh, what is it exactly the need you're trying to fulfill. And that will take us to point number four, conventions. I briefly talked about conventions in one of my previous videos and said that a lot of designers find it very difficult and uh, kind of hurting your ego as a designer to do nothing but following conventions. But in mobile devices or uh, when you're designing for mobile and phone devices specifically, uh, it becomes very, very challenging to change the norm. If we're talking about communicating with developers and engineers, if we're talking about communicating your message and your product and service with the end user, one of the best or the most successful approaches to do so is to maintain the visual conventions in your design. And don't get me wrong guys, I'm not the type of designer who likes to follow the absolute conventions and iOS guidelines or Android guidelines uh, that are being built by Google. 
by the dots. I like to build some custom controls, just go wild and creative a little bit here and there. But at the same time, you have to be very considerate of the environment you're working in, what kind of product you're working on, and the user you're serving, and the product you're trying to, to build and accomplish. So um, keeping all these form factors in considerations when you actually build for mobile are very decisive in how the final product will look and feel like. In other words, you have to be very familiar with the iOS user interface guidelines as well as uh, Material U or Android um, user interface guidelines. I will leave the link to these two down in the description. These are the, like, the most dominant UI guidelines out there because they are basically targeting almost 99% uh, of the global consumer. Like most of the people use either Android or Apple and uh, there is no other way to understand the conventions basically. And by the way, as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, developers and engineers will love you, absolutely fall in love with you. Um, if you maintain a high degree of these guidelines in your designs, as opposed to coming up with custom controls all the time. Point number five, start designing and have fun. Uh, one of the things I mentioned in my previous videos is that in design, you have to be very patient because you will have to go, it's inevitable to go across or to go through multiple iterations. And oftentimes what happens is, uh, especially for junior designers or among junior designers, uh, they kind of lose patience and just give up. Um, and this is absolutely not a good thing to do. You have to train yourself to be more patient and I would even dare and say force yourself to become patient at some point because again especially when you work for corporate level uh, sometimes it becomes very frustrating having to go through all these rounds of approval and iteration just to get one design done um, but again that develops different skill set you become a much better presenter much better negotiator uh, much better uh, public speaker. So again, guys, everything has its uh, pros and cons. Just be patient, be open to the process, and one last thing, trust the process. That was pretty much everything I wanted to share with you guys in this video. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you have any further questions, please don't forget or hesitate to leave a comment down below. And uh, if you want to dive into any of these points in details, please let me know, and I'll be more than happy to uh, make another video about it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.